being your own bank. It's a phrase that we hear a lot with silver stackers, being able to take control of the money that's in the system, take it out of the system and make sure that you're getting what you want from it. But the practicalities of using this stuff as a barter economy maybe is less important. What I think is the most important thing about being your own bank and having some silver and gold in your possession is financial freedom, is the ability to learn about and understand your investments and take control of them. So in today's video, we're gonna examine being your own bank. Is it really something that you should consider as a silver stacker? everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to another Precious Metal Ramble. Now you hear a lot about the phrase, be your own bank, when it comes to silver stacking and precious metal investing. What does that really mean? Is it about taking the silver that you have and using it as currency in its own material wealth, rather than the quarter dollar that this is representing, its actual value in silver? Or is it more about financial freedom and independence of particular financial systems? Two very distinct areas of be your own bank, and I'm gonna examine both of those in today's video. Please remember, I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just a guy who likes shiny things and lots of shiny things as well. So please do bear that in mind. And also I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. So comment down in the comment section and we'll have a good fun debate about what you wanna do with your silver when the time comes to be your own bank. Now, as I said, there are two distinct areas of this discussion in my mind. The first, which I'm gonna talk about, is actually physically using this stuff in a scenario, in a situation that you might need to, in, I don't know, a barter situation. I mean, it's happening now. You can certainly go and pay for various things with various people with real silver, whether it's junk silver like this or 999 fine silver. It's certainly happening, but it's impractical, and I wanna talk about really how it's very impractical for specific situations. Next then is the second sort of segment, which is gonna be all about actual financial freedom, taking money out of the systems and managing it yourself, having that ability to really do what you want with your cash, and I think that is another really important area. So first up, the practicalities of silver and silver investing in terms of using it as a barter tool or a token down the line. Now, a lot of the arguments for being your own bank is taking that money out of the banking system so that when the time comes, if you needed to, you did not have to rely on numbers on a screen and the numbers from someone else. And of course, there's this huge anti-bankers rhetoric out there for pretty much anything that's related to precious metals. It's us versus the bankers. So taking your money out of the fiat system and putting it into this uh, silver coin, whether it's an old school silver coin like these, these old junk half dollars, or whether it's a new modern bullion coin, or even a big bullion bar, just taking that money out of the system and having it there, ready for you to use. Yeah, definitely, I get it, and there's most certainly some advantages to that. How practical it is in this modern world is a very different question, and I think a lot of people are, are genuinely kidding themselves if they really think in an apocalyptic scenario, in a world where the dollar has collapsed, that just simply, I mean, this is a lot of, silver that we have out here on the table. Um, it's probably about, I'm gonna say $2,000 worth. Maybe a bit more, I could have got that math completely wrong, maybe a bit more than that. Um, but basically, you know, you're gonna lug this around. Probably not, you're gonna maybe take a handful of your dimes down to the grocery store. But if you think that a grocery store will still be open in an apocalyptic scenario where the economy's gone completely, um, then again, you're kind of kidding yourself a little bit. Now, silver and gold are pretty useless when you need to get medicine or food and nobody else has got anything to sell or everyone else wants medicine and food. You can't eat silver, you can't use it for shelter. It's, uh, people always use the argument, oh, you can make colloidal silver to treat wounds and things. Um, try doing that in an apocalyptic scenario to actively treat a, you know, an infection or a, something serious medically. It, again, you're kidding, kidding yourselves. It really is very much a, a, just a fool's errand to think that this is gonna be practical. But it is still possible to use, and I'm not going to ignore the fact that you can pay for things with silver and gold, and you do see in scenarios where, like for example, Venezuela or Zimbabwe, where precious metals became this trade medium above and beyond a currency, because they were more stable. You knew that a particular, you know, an ounce worth of silver was worth a certain amount in 
whatever currency it was of the day that you might need as a medium. But a lot of people just took payment in gold and silver, which is definitely possible. But again, that's not the full range of the sort of disaster situation that a lot of people buy this kind of silver, exactly this kind of silver for. So it is this little bit of a, a fallacy, a little bit of a, a you know dream, basically, that you can use silver as a true uh, barter token in those scenarios. So then why do you use it? You know, can you do that now in this modern world? Well, there's definitely an element of people taking payment in silver and wanting to take payment in silver. Uh, but my argument here is that the world still runs on fiat currency, whether you love or hate it. The banking systems still are there. And yes, you can take money out of the banking systems, but ultimately at some point that money's got to go back in to put gas in your car, to put fuel in your car, pay your energy bills, pay your rent, pay your mortgage, pay any other costs that you can't make silver. Even the most ardent, hardcore silver stackers and preppers that want to be their own bank completely still have fiat currency. In fact, you have to have fiat currency to even buy this stuff. So yeah, it's not the easy solution of be your own bank and just have all of this stuff ready to go. That leads me on to the second point which I want to make, which is all about financial freedom. And that is a very big thing. And that's something that I would very much more uh, be inclined to say that silver and gold are great at being your own bank for. Now, being your own bank, when I was researching this topic, uh, it's a really interesting one that has a whole host of different um, elements to it. You can be your own bank by just simply taking charge of your financial institutions, essentially, just what you want to do with your money. Be your own investor rather than giving your money to a stockbroker to invest for you. Research what stocks and shares you want to buy. Research what investments you want to go into. And I know for myself, it was very much that which helped me spur through to buying silver and getting doing what I'm even doing in the first place. You know, I wanted to have something that was different and I had a few stocks and shares, but it was all very much in these kind of big generic tracker funds managed by others. And it's just one constituent part or you're sorry, you're one small constituent part of a giant picture that you're reliant on other people, the systems. But taking silver into your own possession, being the bank in terms of actually being the one that's responsible for your money, not just the investments that you make and the prices that you buy at, but small things like even responsibility and security of having this stuff. I think it was really enlightening for me and it certainly allowed me as an individual to grow and to understand what is the right purchase to make in terms of an investment and you know how you do your research how you go about making sure that what you're buying is real is legit is actually going to be there and that financial freedom is really really good and I can't under or overstate that enough you know being able to take charge of your money and see the results of it coming out as well you know a lot of people will have money in the bank account and feel very secure and safe about it but of course at the moment with inflation that money just erodes away to nothing and it will over time and I'm very fearful of that and I know a lot of other silver stackers are as well that it will just end up being something that is not right for everyone uh, but having some of this in your possession having some of this silver and gold will definitely protect you from that long term so being your own bank in terms of having some of this it gives that financial freedom it really does but realistically using it in a if apocalyptic barter trade scenario is not something I subscribe to and it's something that I think is a little bit of a fallacy and a little bit of a kind of it's a cultural thing I get that it's a cultural thing as well like a lot of the preppers a lot of the uh, and I don't begrudge by the way preppers and people who are very hardcore about this world uh, you know that's fine people are free to live and choose the way they want to but quite frankly for me if there is an apocalyptic scenario you know the chances of you being even there in the end is not very likely. And then even if you are, having a giant bag, having a huge, you know, cotton bag full of this stuff is going to just put a target on your back. If you march on down to the local trade center in an apocalyptic scenario, the market, and you lug out a bunch of silver, you're going to be the one to get that money off. That's even if you can spend it, because as I said, you know, people will value other things more. This world is crazy. You know, you'd be surprised how many people right now would just look at this pile of coins here and go, ah, okay, well, you've probably got like, I don't know, $200 face value, something like that. They won't understand that it's real silver. I bet if I went out and about and I handed people a bunch of these coins, they would not know. They'd be just like, oh, it's an American coin. 
they would not know that there's 90% silver in these coins. So being your own bank is an interesting topic that I would love to know your thoughts on. So please comment down below with your thoughts and opinions on this subject. And I'd love to hear what you've got to say. I'll join you down there for a fun debate. If you've enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed this big old pile of coins, which I've now got to painstakingly sort and put back into my storage boxes, then you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button. Also, we've just surpassed 40,000 subs. A huge thank you to all of you. We're going to be doing a giveaway and that announcement is going to happen on Sunday. So make sure you've got the alarm bell on and subscribe to our channel so you can get notifications when that video goes live about how to enter to win some silver. Otherwise, have a great week. We'll see you on the next video. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.